So yeah, I think this is broken. So suck the snake. We draw two cards here. I'm pretty sure this is what you call broken. Um, I'm pretty sure this is what you call going infinite. Because we lose a life, but we gain a life. Yep. I'm not sure if the opponent's going to last much longer here, because we can actually do this infinitely with Moldavine Reclamation out. Is this me? I think the answer is yes. Hi guys and welcome back to a new episode with MTG Josh. Today we will be looking at a Golgari Hapatra build. So Hapatra is a green and black 2-2 human cleric and she says whenever she deals damage to a player you may put a minus one counter on a creature. And whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature you create a green snake with death touch. So there's a few directions we're going to go with this. The first direction is the swarm mentality. So you can go wide and then once you've got loads of snakes you can use hooded blight fang which is a two and black one four death touch and whenever a creature you control with death touch attacks each opponent loses one life and you gain one life so this is a fantastic way to synergize with loads of snake tokens you can outright win the game without even dealing the combat damage just the trigger and it says whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a planeswalker you can destroy that planeswalker so it has planeswalker death touch which is really nice Another way to increase the power of your snakes is with Black's Vexing Pest, which is a 2 and green 3-2. When it dies, you gain 4 life, but it gives other pests, bats, insects and snakes, and spiders, plus 1, plus 1. So it's a nice way to uh, give your board presence double power, essentially. And if you don't like that side, you can use Search for Black's, which is 2 bat black sorcery. Look at the top 5 of your library, you put any number of them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. You lose 3 life for each card you put in your hand. So it's a nice way to gain a bit of card advantage. So... Yeah, once you've built up an army, basically make a swarm, use loads of minus one, minus one counter synergies, and uh, one of the other cards that you might want to use with that synergy is uh, Carnifex Demon. When it comes in, it's a 4-4, four, four, essentially because it comes with two minus one counters. However, you can remove a minus one counter from Carnifex Demon to put a minus one counter on each other creature you control. So this is almost like exponential. If you've got 10 snakes out and your opponent has 10 creatures, then you're going to get... 20 more snakes uh, obviously you'll lose your original snakes but you replace them and the new opponent's army will be drastically weakened as well so this is a fantastic way to finish off your opponent in style so with that in mind let's get into some games don't forget to hit the like button if you're a fan of this style of deck the deck list will be in the description below and sub to see more content like this nice so we go first against lonus the cryptozoologist so this is going to be a simic steely kind of deck or these can be quite brutal whenever none token creature enters under the control investigate sack x clues target print reveals the top x cards in the library you put an unknown permanent with a mana value x or less from among them onto battlefield so this is like reverse kinnon which is pretty scary let's go for the desert first yeah definitely a powerful ability um bit of a feel bad card though stealing your opponent's cards uh, see, so yeah, we'll just have to see how we do. Let's get the patcher out and see if we can get any value in here. Wash away. Well, I had a feeling this card would be absolutely broken, and it turns out it is. It's newly printed from Crimson Vow, and yeah, it's a one blue counter spell which counters a general. So yeah, I think this probably needs to be banned at one point. And. Uh, Let's get rid of their general, I'm not having to stay around. Yeah, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. How broken is Wash Away? So it's, it's one mana to counter a spell that wasn't cast from its owner's hand. And you could pay one and blue blue to remove the words within the brackets so you can counter any spell. It's a bit weirdly complex, but... So yeah, I think uh, I'm going to punch the opponent here by shutting them down completely. Just kill everything they have. It's they've it's kind of annoyed me now. Step out of the shadows. Uh, 
We even have the Festering Mummy here, so we could sack this to Vraska to draw a card, gain a life, and then we could put the minus one counter onto an opponent's creature. So that could be useful. And then eventually we could even recast our generals by getting it back. So um, so they've got four mana open. Blue, blue, green, green. So that could be... Well, it could be anything here. Um, let's go for the Replicating Ring. Okay, and then go for the Guardian Idol. So annoyingly, if they have something with Flash, it is going to screw us over. Overcharged Amalgam. Sacrifices must be made. Intriguing. Okay, so it's a 3-3 Flash exploit. And if they sacked a creature when this came in, I could have counted a spell, ability, or trigger ability. Okay, fair enough. So it looks like our Vask is dead, so that is quite annoying. Yeah, normally the opponent's kind of, because I've had this flash card, it kind of turns the tide now. So let's see how we can get around this. What can we do? The flyer is going to be pretty annoying. I guess we go for the Hapatra. And we have two mana open, so maybe the Arvechna draw some cards. Yeah, so see what I mean? Like, because they had that one blue spell. They've completely changed the tide of battle because we would have already had Hapatra out. And she would have been able to swing in there because the overcharged amalgam was tapped. We are quite low on lands, which is unfortunate. First Empire. So they're going to get a massive creature into their hand. It's annoying that we don't have the Spend and Agon anymore. That would have been a like a four for one. Because we could have killed their Silver Raven and the Fierce Empath getting two snakes as well. So what could their Fierce Empath be getting here? Is it going to be the stereotypical Crater Hoof? Shimmer Dragon, interesting. The Shimmer Dragon is going to be tough to kill her. Swinging in with her, guys. Okay. Under 17 already. So, a land would be pretty nice here. Ooh, Culling Ritual. Wow, this is, uh... It's actually pretty good. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do Culling Ritual. It gets rid of their clues. It kills two of our things, but... I'm not too worried about that. Let's see if they manage to steal anything from the top of our deck. They get a fin if they want, but then we're going to kill it anyway, so... It's not too bad either way. The main thing was I wanted to kill the artifacts because... <clears throat> it would have given the Shimmer Dragon so much power to, to just tap two to draw a card every turn. Sweet. So we get six mana here. So we could recast Hapatra if we wanted to. Six mana. But I think I'm going to go for the binding the old guards to kill the overcharged amalgam. And we can even go for the Tyvar Kel. So this could be good. And yeah, let's make a blocker here. So, although Tyvar Kel doesn't make snakes, he can make his elves have death touch, and they that is pretty relevant in a deck like this. Apologies if you can hear my boy screaming. He does like to scream when I record. It could be because he hates me. I hope it isn't that. So interestingly, he chose to not go for the Shimmer Dragon. And interestingly, he chose to attack. I guess he has to. Okay, deadly dispute. That's going to be nice. And finally get a land. This has taken quite some time to just... Uh, Get our fifth land drop here, which is quite annoying. 
so let's go for another one one any creatures in here that we want to get back no can't even cast a patra we got a festering mummy though so it is tempting to just deadly dispute now to kill their cyst before they play another artifact but we can we can wait we can wait to see what they do if they have shimmer dragon which could be an issue because it gives us them hexproof if they have four more artifacts so let's see what they do here we have been very lucky not getting many lands here comes the lonus and yeah let's tell you dispute sucking the festering mummy And yeah, we'll kill the Sis because the Alonis is going to survive anyway. We can still do annoying things. So it does give us more lands. And you know what? I'm going to cycle this to draw a card because we've got nothing in the graveyard to get back anyway. Card effects Demon is pretty sweet. We, it's a shame that we don't have Patra out, but I guess this is just going to have to do for now. So let's go for the card effects Demon. And then we can. What can we do? Make another blocker, I guess. Or we could just go up a little bit, make our elf a bit stronger, Your and then pass a turn. So now, if they cast anything, we can pay one black to remove a counter from it and put a counter on every other creature. It's going to be, it's going to be a pretty effective way to diminish their power, and it's a nice way to even get around Shimmer Dragon if they choose to cast it. And also by putting the counter on our elf, it means our elf doesn't die now. Okay, so they're going to investigate and they sack X clues. So, so far they can look at the top one. I don't really like them having Lonus because it means they can steal our things and I don't appreciate that. But right now there's nothing we can really do. So the off warrior can actually tap for black as well, which is something quite relevant. And the question is, should I activate Carnifex Demon now or not? Or should I wait for Maximum Snakes? No, I think we're going to activate this now, just to diminish their power. And then I could do it again. It's tempting. But I think I'd rather save it. For now. Bajuka bog. Do I want a Bajuka bog the graveyard? It's tempting as well. So first thing, let's put a counter on to the elf warrior. So that will save it from dying from the Carnifex demon. I probably should have tapped it in response, but that's fair enough. Go for the Hepatra. So this way now we get snakes when we activate the Carnifex demon. We can only do this one more time anyway. So now we can just Bajuka bug their graveyard. <laughs> and this guy's got Death Touch, so we could even attack. Or is it better as a blocker? No, we'll leave it back for now. I don't feel very confident about attacking. See what happens. The Lonus and the Nettlesist is going to get infuriating because the Nettlesist gets plus one, plus one for each artifact. And obviously when they do play a creature, they get a clue. So that is some incredible synergy there. Very nice pairing of cards. We need a way to put more counters on Carnifex Demon, ideally. And then we can wipe the field a bit more. Prime Speaker Vanifar, okay, so we really don't want her to be able to activate. <coughs> so they're probably going to pass, yep, so now we activate the Carnivex Demon, so this should give us five snakes. Pretty cool. So now we 
If we have something like a fin as a top deck, it'd be pretty awesome. Hive of the Eye Tyrant, okay. So I guess we can go for the Necro Blossom Snarl. Reveal that just to keep the mana up. So she's a 1-1, one, one, so they still can block it. Annoyingly, the Lonus is just able to keep us at bay. So I guess we can swing in with everything but these guys. It's a considerable amount. You know, that's 11 if they don't block. Sweet. Um, is it better to get another blocker or increase... Tell you what, let's draw a card with the cast lock Thwain first, so we'll be losing three. Some kind of non-lands, some kind of spell would be nicer. Call of the Death Dweller, any creatures in the graveyard. So we do have a Festering Mummy. I think I might wait until Hepatra dies. Then we can get her back. We could threaten to ultimate in our following turn, but we don't we don't really have an elf tribal deck. I think threatening to ultimate him could be viable though. Because the opponent doesn't know we're not a pseudo elf build, right? Your courage is legendary. And uh yeah, we'll just pass the turn. It is a bit scary because the opponent has access to a lot of synergy over there. They can steal something from the top of our deck. They can sacrifice something to get something bigger from the deck. Um, and it is pretty irritating how their toughness is so huge. Like, for them to have at least three to four toughness is you know, quite unlikely in most games. But here we are. It's a real shame that Carnifex team doesn't have another counter on them. That would be fantastic because I'd essentially double the number of snakes I have. Just from my side of the field alone. And actually, on this battlefield, I'll get triple the snakes. Wish card puts counters on my thing. So, this is like the perfect counter against my Apatra. Their Lonus isn't even affected by my Apatra, which is annoying because obviously they're getting bigger. But here's the interesting part if they activate Lonus and sacrifice that many clues, it will lose that much toughness. So, it's, it's risky to do it. Apparently it's very hesitant about casting the Shimmer Dragon. Would we see it? Okay, so here comes the Shimmer Dragon. So now they're going to be able to draw so many cards. But here's the strange thing. Now they've only got two blockers. And I'm starting to wonder if it was a mistake for them to tap out there. They could have actually done that in my turn. Assassin's Trophy. Wow, what a card. Uh, so what can we do? I guess if we alpha with everything. I could... Okay, let's add some mana. Then we'll untap it to give it Death Touch. So this is one quarter of their life total. So this is kind of a viable threat. We can Assassin's Trophy a blocker. Let's see if they do anything about this. They kind of need to do something, right? I mean, they only have two mana open. What's the best two mana spell? I mean, they could have some kind of fog effect. Now they have three mana. Let's go for the Hive, so we can swing for that. And let's go for an Alpha here. See what happens. They can only block one thing, and they kind of have to block the Carnifex Demon. Because if they don't, they'll be taking the rest, so have they got a way to squirm out of this? They could bounce the Carnifex Demon. But that's actually really bad, because we can recast it. Okay. Interesting.
So they're at two. Let's diminish the loners here. Let's make it harder for them to want to activate it. Because obviously, as I said, if they crack all these, they're going to uh, lose the, the loners. And yeah, I'm happy to pass the turn. They could have any number of scary cards in their hand, but I mean, they kind of need a board wipe. So it's a very interesting scenario we're in here. They need a lot of things, to be honest. They need to kill the Carnifex Demon, tap it, block it, bounce it. Seek Restoration. Okay, so they're going to draw five cards. Is it enough? I'm starting to think they're a bit too greedy. Wow, that was a really close game. Whew, cool. Moving on to the next one. Okay, so we're going first against a Gitrog monster, so they're going to be a Golgari land recursion style deck. Starting hand is pretty decent. Lotus Cobra should be able to push us quite good if it survives. We don't need to reveal Swamp here. Once we get the Frexian Arena going, things will be good. So go for the Cobra. Hepatra is an anti creature deck, so unless they have a lot of creatures, this could be. Not very good. We do have a Bajuka Bog, which is fantastic versus their Graveyard Shenanigans. I think for now, what could we do? So definitely going to go for a land here. Right. So we've got four mana. So we can do Mindstone into Phyrexian Arena. It's pretty damn good. You can't go wrong with a Phyrexian Arena that early. And yeah, this should hopefully be able to fill a hand, unless the opponent has a way to stop us. Great, so they're going to be able to play multiple lands at the turn now, which is never good to see. We have more ways to ramp, which is delicious. Nests of Scarabs, whenever you put one of the counters on creature, create that many insects. So unfortunately, we don't have a way to put the counters on yet. But I guess we could just go for Hepatra. Blast Zone is going to be irritating because it's going to be able to kill all of our things. If they put it on two, they can kill the Lotus Cobra, the Hepatra, and the Mindstone. So we don't really want to see that happening. Um, let's play lands. Yeah, this is going to be rough. Especially if they can replay the Blast Zone. So as soon as they use the Blast Zone, we're going to want a Pajuka Bog. So we're going to save this until that happens. Otherwise, they can do it like over and over, knowing this kind of deck. There's a lot of recursion. Here comes the Gitrog Monster. So that's, in a way, it's good because it means that we don't suffer from Blast Zone in the next turn. Poison to Archer could be interesting. And a Rankle. Oh, this this could be good, actually. So let's go for the Point Barons here. Rankle is going to be a nice way to make them sacrifice a creature. Uh, yeah, so... Let's swing in with a Rankle. And yeah, just a rank will do. So we're going to make everyone discard a card and sack a creature. So we're going to try and make them. Uh, do we want the poison tip or do we want the into the north? Yeah, we'll get rid of the into the north, I think. Okay. So we have to try and. Um, debilitate them quite a bit here. They do sacrifice the land as well. So if we can get snakes out with Hepatra's triggered ability, this would be a lot more effective. But unfortunately, we haven't drawn any minus one, minus one counter synergy. Okay, so they can play lands from the Gradient now. So this is bad news for us. Pestilent Cauldron is going to be irritating because they can discard a card to create a 1-1 one, one Pest. Okay. So the Gitrog swings in. We don't want to block that. We just need a way to get through their blockers. So any kind of removal spell would be useful. Then we can start really synergizing with Rankle here. Okay, land is not quite going to cut it. Oh, we do have a Festering Mummy. That's nice as a sacrifice target. 
Um, they don't have any any lands in the graveyard, so that's not too annoying yet. So let's go for the poison tip archer. Whenever something dies, each opponent loses a life. So we're going to swing in with a rankle. Okay, so we'll do some more shenanigans. We will make discard and sack. So hopefully we can uh, slow them down a lot here. It's definitely a scary matchup because I know how effective the Gitter of Monster can be. So now we'll sack the Festering Mummy. And we get quite a nice amount of triggers here. And then we'll put a minus one counter on the Gitter of Monster, which will then trigger a Patra giving us a snake. So yeah, it's a very high synergy deck. And we also get the Nest of Scarabs trigger. So lots more fodder. And then it's tempting to even just play the Bajuka Bog here. But I still think it'll be worth it waiting one more turn. So the annoying thing is they keep drawing two cards, but their lands are going down. Um, obviously our worst nemesis would be if they used a board wipe. Crux of Fate is exactly that. But I guess they had to do it, otherwise our synergy would have just taken over the game. They will lose quite a bit of life from our Poison Tip Archer here. But another bonus is they can't cast Get Rock Monster. Okay, now they can because they played an extra land. Okay, Cartouche could be good for the following turn. So now this is a great time to uh, play the Bajuka Bog, get rid of the whole graveyard. This will stop them replaying any of these uh, annoying spells. And then we'll go for the Hepatra as well. Okay, let's see what happens. If we get desperate, we could even sack the Mind Stone to draw a card, but it does feel a bit bad considering that our Hapatra does go up each time we lose it. Harrow. Okay, so they're going to sack to get two lands to the battlefield. Luckily, their Gitrog isn't out, so they're not going to get to draw any cards from this. So I'm not sure if that was the play. They do have a Blast Zone, so maybe it's a good idea to just crack the Mind Stone, or wait. I think we can wait here. The Arena is helping us. Casualties of War is awesome. I kind of want them to get Geartrog out first, though. Uh, so I could even attack them with the Crawling Barons as well. So might as well make that online. Some interesting synergy with Hapatra and Crawling Barons here. In that Crawling Barons goes up each time. But I can then afford to put a counter on it with Hapatra. In order to get a snake. So it looks like they're going to activate ability 3. Which is exiling cards from a graveyard and then drawing a card. Fair enough. It's a pretty nice graveyard uh, removal there. So yeah, I think I'll be putting counter on there. The Corny Browns will survive anyway, so we might as well just get some more value from Hepatra, and we get a Scarab as well. So here comes the Gitrog monster. They are gaining quite a lot of incidental life just from playing random lands. We're going to have to win soon or the arena is going to kill us. And uh, Unfortunately, we don't have the forest to play the casualties of war. So for now, what can we do? That is actually pretty annoying. So we could go for Finn. We don't need any more green just yet. Finn is definitely um, a threat, and we can go for Cartouche. So enchantment creature we control gives it lifelink. So tell you what then, we'll put it on the snake. So this is good for a number of reasons. Firstly, it makes it a 2-2, which means that if they make a 1-1, that's not going to be sufficient to kill our guy. 
We get another death touch regardless. We can even put an extra counter on a snake this turn. So let's see what he does. Let's swing in with the insect as well, because if he blocks this, he'll still take one. And if he doesn't block this, he's going to get two poison counters. <laughs> okay, so they're discarding the Lotus Cobra to get a 1-1. One, one. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it was worth it. Interesting blocks there. Yeah, so in this case, it paid off to make that larger. So now I'm not going to bother using this ability to put a counter on a snake because I'd rather draw a card with a mind stone just to get a forest because we're desperate for forests here. Here we go, they're going to lose another land. I feel like potentially because they were just kind of messing around, they didn't get to really utilize the blast zone here unless they can untap it somehow. Looks like this life game might be helping them quite a bit as well. Obviously every point of life they gain is like nullifying one of our snake attacks. So next turn they're going to kill all of our two drops which could be quite concerning so we really need a forest now. It's kind of make or break. So they're probably not going to attack, well they are going to attack, oh maybe not. So we need a forest. Some green source, any green source, untapped. It could be... Important, I'm not quite sure yet. Oh, it's one turn too late. We did get a Ghost Quarter though, so that's going to be fantastic. So we're going to Ghost Quarter right now. Unfortunately, this does mean they draw a card, but it does mean that our army remains intact. Okay, so yeah, drawing a card is, uh, yeah, it's pretty annoying. Uh, destroy artifact creature enchantment. So yeah, I think we're going to kill the Gitmoth monster as well. Okay, so it's not looking too bad. Unfortunately, this means next turn we still can't cast casualties, but we did save our army. So now we swing in with the team. And they probably make a blocker here. Just to block one of the death touches. Probably the 1-1 one, one snake. Well, this would be the most effective one to block anyway. Yeah, so just as I thought. I could have made a bigger with the Animal Sanctuary there. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to put... any counters on my things. Well, they're saying that I could have put it on the inset there just to get two tokens. Oh, well, yeah, there might have been a small mistake there. <laughs> They have got four Infect or Poison Counters, so here comes Gitmoth Monster again, so they're getting desperate now. So here would be a good chance to put a counter on my Snake, which in hindsight I probably should have done previously anyway. Splendid Agony could be good, Death Sprout's even better. So yeah, this is probably a game now. Yeah, that was uh, pretty damn close. I think, oddly enough, the the um, ghost quarter there saved our saved our butts. But yeah, that was a pretty intense game. Okay, so our next opponent is Loth, the Spider Queen. So it's going to be spiders versus snakes. Starting hand is very juicy. Dark ritual in your opening hand is always something you want to see. Not that we want to use it just yet. But maybe turn to your moth could be pretty awesome here. Let's find out what we can do. We could even go for the replicating ring to get that out early. So let's look at the math here. We could go for the rep ring, and then in the following turn we could still cast your moth anyway. Yeah, let's do something along those lines, I think. Yeah, go for the replicating ring here. Yeah. And then we could go for Patra, yeah. Seems nice. It might feel a waste to go for a ritual into a rock, but it's basically trading three temporary mana for three for one permanent mana. 
Do they have board wipes? It's likely because they're a planeswalker deck. Um, let's just go for it. Let's just see what happens here. Swing in. See, it's not. Let's not put anything on. So, what do you guys think about your moth? Pretty broken, isn't it? Pro humans, pay a life, sack a creature. Put a minus one counter on a creature, pay two, discard and proliferate. Man, isn't it? Four mana, two, four as well. Imagine they made an ability that was reverse proliferate. So instead of putting a counter on any number of things with counters on them, imagine to take a counter up from everything with a counter on. That would be pretty epic. Oh, Moldavon Reclamation, that would have been an awesome play there. Um, so there's two, two can get bigger every time a creature dies put a counter on the case so that could be quite scary i wonder if they'd block that patch right here we could just kill it i think that's what we're gonna do kill the cat i mean it's a bit sad because i do actually like cats but not in this case not cats armed with a scythe that's just a bit too far uh yeah let's swing in And do I want to get a snake? I feel like it'd be useful. Yeah, let's get a snake. Only because now we have the Moldavine Reclamation. And whenever one of our creatures dies, we draw a card and lose a life. So this could be very vital here, considering we're kind of top decking. The opponent has many things they can do. <laughs> so yeah, that scythe is uh, pretty scary now. Especially when they can go for Lolf next turn. Belfort Mastery is good, but yeah, I want to get the Moldavine out first. Swing in. Do I care about Ruthless Sniper? Yeah, I, I do. See if the 1 1 gets blocked. And then maybe the following turn we could storm the front because they obviously want to get Lolf out as soon as possible and I feel like the synergy with this at side is uh, pretty scary especially when whatever creature they control dies but loyalty can't draw off so I could sack a creature to put a counter on another creature here so yeah I think this is broken so sack the snake we draw two cards here I'm pretty sure this is what you call broken um I'm pretty sure this is what you call going infinite. Because we lose a life, but we gain a life. Yep. I'm not sure if the opponent's going to last much longer here, because we can actually do this infinitely with Moldavine Reclamation out. Is this me? I think the answer is yes. Um, and in hindsight, I probably should have done this before attacks, but alas, let's discard the Eye of Vecna now, we don't need that, we've got seven cards in hand. Oh wow, if it's in the choices with that so I can get another snake. Tell you what, let's get another snake. Oh, okay, you have to pay one, right, fair enough. So the board wipe now, still not that bad because we have a rank full. Destroy non-legendary creature. That is quite intriguing. Well, I know they couldn't have gone for any of the other things, but... I do feel a bit bad for my opponent here. Well, let's go for the swing. Only because now they can't really cast creatures. Because we can just absolutely murder them. This would be a good time to set up non-creature presence because the more creatures we we put out, if they board wipe, we're just screwed. So yeah, let's not go too far here. But yeah, Yorgmoth and Hepatra is just mental. They need to kill one of these at least, but we have a snake skin veil as well, so it's going to be very difficult for them to do that. Here comes Lol. Ha. 
creates two spiders. Yep. So unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to survive. So we'll respond to the equip. Yeah, th this is just really mean here. So give that minus one. Yeah, this synergy is just absurd there. So yeah, if you're making a Patra deck, make sure to put a Yorgmoth in. Okay, so we're getting first against a Vadrek Astral Archmage. Starting hand decent, we've got the colours we need and a duress. So let's see how we do. I think we start with either the Eye Tyrant and Duress. See what we're working with here. Oh, so removal, ramp. Removal. Oh, okay. Um, I guess we'll go for one of the removal spells. Because even if we killed the light up the night, it still has flashback. So it's a bit of a feel bad getting rid of a card with flashback because they can still do it anyway. But Perforosis Intervention, they can't get that back for now. And I guess we go for Hapatra. Let us begin the path to snakes. There, guys, are one, two. So we have good attacks. And we could leave Deadly Dispute up in case they try and kill Hapatra. Yeah, there's no reason to not do such a thing. We don't need lands anyway, so using the environmental sciences is a bit of a non bear right now. We don't want to make it a 1 1 because we want to, we want to be able to swing through Vadrek. So here they could. Okay, so they're going for ramp. So now it's day. So let's cast a spell. Get ourselves a first. And let's swing with Hapatra. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate today. All my opponents seem to be playing controlly shells, and it's making Hapatra not so effective. We have managed to win a few games, but not via conventional means as such. So they might not cast any spells, and then this means that their Celestis triggers when it goes to our turn. If a player casts no spells during their own turn, it becomes night, and then two spells makes it back to day. But, let's see, they could be tempted to kill Hapatra here, which is exactly what's happening, so now we can use Deadly Dispute. Get a bit of value from our own general dying. So at least Celestis won't be flipping. Memory Lapse. Cheeky bugger. Very cheeky. Yeah, so, uh, not gonna lie, that is pretty infuriating. Guess all we can do is uh, keep steam on ahead. They can only flash this back if they have a planeswalker with enough loyalty, though. So, not the best flashback spell, but it's certainly unique in its ability. It's the only one of its kind that re revolves around planeswalker loyalty in addition to paying another cost. Here comes Vadrek. So, I feel like they've got a way to stop me here. Let's swing in and see what happens. Let's see if they let me put a counter on Vadric. That is interesting. So now I'm going to activate if the Deadlands to try and kill it off. That was a unique play. <laughs> I don't know, unless they had some kind of other bit of synergy, but it felt a bit weird. Unless they wanted me to go all in, and now they have a board wipe. In which case, that was a decent move. It is annoying that we don't have another mana open for the Deadly Dispute. Strike it rich. Okay, so they're definitely ramping here.
So now I'm scared because they've put this in the bin. Do they have Mizix's Mastery? Do they have Mizix's Mastery? I mean, we do have Hive of the Eye Tyrant. So I'm activating this. And then we're going to swing in. And Hive of the Eye Tyrant is awesome because you can exile stuff from their graveyard. So I'm going to get rid of that Magma Resistance a little faster somehow. And yeah, let's give one of our stakes Vigilance basically. It, it was tempting to binding the old guards on the Celestis. That was very tempting. But I feel like I'd rather get rid of one of their bigger threats here. Okay, let's see what they choose to do here. Going for the attack. Could it be that they just don't have any useful synergies at the right time? I really don't want Vadric to exist. So I think I'm going to binding it. Let's just get rid of it. They put messing around. Let's see what they've got. So they do have like seven mana. Potentially eight. Time warp. So it probably was for the best. But I've said it before. Time warping on an empty field is pretty useless. Even if you had a 1 1 out, you could bump full one damage. But yeah. Kind of says draw a card at that point. Okay, so they're desperate for something. And I think that something rhymes with the word mana. Should I feel to ruin their frost balls? No, okay, guess I don't need to. Sweet. Moving on to the next one. So we're going against a five color dragon deck. And Starting Hand is not that good, I don't think. Yeah, there's not much that really excites me this early on. So let's see what a mulligan can do. Slightly better, we've got a way to get a forest ramp, and binding is one of the best cards in the format, so we'll definitely keep that. Soul Sting is cool as well. Comes in, put two counters on the creature you control, so if Hepatra's out, you get two states. And also, when he dies, you may put a counter on target creature for each counter on Soul Stinger. So let's go for the Castle Lock Thwin, which is a Scottish sounding land. Also, if if it's a floating castle, how do you even get up there? Like, I don't see any escalators. So let's go for... Let's get ourselves a forest. Okay. So opponents got Tiamat, so they're going to be able to two to five of their most broken combo with dragons. So essentially, if they cast Tiamat... We're kind of dead in the following turn. That's not normally what happens. Let's see if we can beat them. Two mana open. Black Sapatra. They're probably not going to have any small creatures for us to kill, which is annoying. That happens a lot. Uh, give us some ramp, I guess. Keep the mana flowing. So now we can go for Tome of Legends, Hapatra, are they going to kill Hapatra? Uh, yeah, fair enough. A lot of players seem to be respecting Hapatra, which is always interesting because they don't have any creatures out, so they didn't have to kill Hapatra yet. Unless they choose maybe to go for a creature now. I don't know. I've, I don't feel like Hapatra is a kill on sight general, unless you have a field. Because otherwise, they could have just saved that for a scarier card, but... Turn Lich, okay. 
digging for mana, I guess. It's going to be very difficult to deal with their dragons as soon as they're out. We need to save some removal, I guess. Belfort Amit. Okay, so let's see if Hapatra lives another turn. If we get to go for Belfal Amet or Soul Stinger, that could be nice. And a Geode. So they don't do anything scary this turn. It looks like the following turn is going to be a proper Ball Ache. Tone Bound Lich does have to have Touch and Life Link, so we don't want to attack into that. We could Binding their Geode in the following turn. But I don't know if that really slows them down that much. Wow, they're making it. Okay, so we want to we want to bounce this really because this only triggers if it dies. So we're gonna have to try and be creative with getting rid of the turn Lich. Attacking because they want to be able to draw. So they're looking for more land or something. Intriguing. We can kind of disable this by putting a minus counter on it, and then just letting it sit there. So it's certainly going to be interesting. I don't know doesn't do it. This lets you proliferate. Intriguing. So we could go for the binding on the mana geode. Do we want to proliferate now? No, we want to be clever about this. Firstly, we're going to swing in with Hepatra. We've got a lot of nice synergies going on here. We'll put the counter on the turn bound lich. Giving us a snake. Then we go for the pollen bright druid. Now we proliferate. And we will choose all of our targets. So this deck works really nicely with sagas because we can accelerate the saga's rate of growth. Go for the tap land here. We could even go for the Elves. If they board wipe, they board wipe. It's just the way it is sometimes. But yeah, we've set up a really nice field. Replicating, replicating ring, getting to eight counters means that we get a lot of mana. Do they have the seventh mana? They do not have the seventh mana. Creatures you control gain death touch. So if I managed to draw Finn, that would be brutal. So I'm tempted to draw a card with the Tome of Legends to see what we get here. An enemy is holding priority, so they might have an instant. Tyvar Kel. We have two elves out. Okay. Could we do there's so many options i might leave blacks for the search for blacks rather than pumping our snakes here let's go for the swing and see if they have a way to kill our dudes <laughs> i will be very happy if i can beat a team of fire so as usual i guess we'll Kill a guy to get a snake. That's fine, because I like to have the potential to block just in case. Let's see if they counter the tie bar kill. Okay. Then we can untap the Nanoir Elves. That gives us an additional mana. So we could go for a four drop. If this manages to resolve, which it I does. So let's go for a Soul Stinger here. Comes in, put two counters on a creature we control. Let's put it on Soul Stinger because we want the trigger to go off when it dies. We get snakes. So Elliot, if you're watching, I hope I'm uh, making you proud here. So Elliot is uh, my friend in real life who has a Hapatra combined the deck. 
and he has slaughtered me many times with his snake army. So, I guess this is kind of a uh, little homage to your deck, Elliot. Perhaps there's some things in this deck you see that you also like. So here comes Tiamat with his army of insert swear word. So they have all manner of devilish thingy bobs. Um, so now we have an issue. At least the dragons they've chosen don't end the game immediately, like most players I see. We do need a way to get through though. Annoyingly, if we kill the Tome Man Lich, then the journey flips and they can start resing stuff from the graveyard. But they only have the Tome Man Lich to revive at the moment. I think the best thing to do for now would be kill the team, because that's going to be a problem regardless. Of what we do. Get ourselves a forest. So destroy creature if it has if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn. So I think I'm gonna draw with the Tomb of Legends first. Oh that's a good removal spell. So yeah, I'm happy to just swing in here with everything but the Lanawar Elves somewhat unhindered. Obviously they can block. That's fair enough. So they will raise it, then it will flip. Turn Battle Lich will return. And yeah, I guess we go to the opponent's turn. They they don't have enough mana to double spell yet. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they can eat. Agent of Treachery is quite brutal. What are they going to steal here? I firstly have to say, why is Agent of Treachery in your dragon deck? That's an incredible flavour fail. So Philippe, I suddenly don't like your deck whatsoever. <laughs> Let's tap this for some mana. Yeah, that's pretty BS, to be perfectly honest. That is such a cop-out as well, because they're, they're putting that in because it's a strong card. But also, why am I facing like tier 1 stuff? Who knows? Um, I think the issue now is I need to exile it, because if we kill it, we're just going to keep bringing it back every turn with that soul, which is just absolutely broken. Uh, I hope I crush the opponent now, because this is just... Absurd. I don't want to attack with the Crawling Barons, so I'm going to choose to draw. Yeah, people who break flavour to put in powerful cards, yeah, I, I don't appreciate that. And the Dark Ritual. You know what? I'm going to pop the team. Make them two twos. Uh, let's go for the Bell for Amber here. Put a minus one, minus one on the creature you control. So if Soul Stinger dies, it puts something on other things. So let's put it on the elves, I'm not too bothered about this. We have the fatal push as well, so let's just go for an alpha here. See what happens. We've got a fair amount of damage coming in here. So interestingly, they choose to block the Soul Singer of all things. Very greedy block. Down to two. Okay. So let's kill the well. I think let's kill the dragon and the tournament. Yes, so they're both dead. So unless they have a board wipe now, pretty sure they're screwed. But to be perfectly honest, you kind of deserve it for playing Agent of Treachery. Um. If they have a board wipe, obviously that screws up my entire plan. But we do have a Castle of Thwain to try and recover. So do they have a way out of this? Ruinous Ultimatum. Okay, Flying Trample Haste. Looks like they're dead. 
hope you'll all join me in saying that uh, that deck was cheeky. <laughs> but there you go. People are free to put what they want in, but if you put Agent of Treachery in, don't expect uh, the opponent to have any form of mercy when you lose. Okay. If you guys enjoyed watching these videos today, don't forget to check out my other videos on my channel. And most of all, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this.